Howdy y'all, welcome back to Cowboy Convos. As the title of this video says, we are going to be talking about the famous obesity paradox, and how it is used by the fat liberationist community in a way to prove that being overweight or obese is healthier than being in the average BMI range, therefore disproving that excess fat is bad for health. It doesn't take much brain power to recognize why this is a silly argument to make, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. There will be research I mentioned in this video, and the sources for that research will be in the description box. First, let's learn what the obesity paradox is from the words of a very popular fat liberationist. For reference, she is stitching another TikToker who is claiming that, quote, fat bodies live longer than thin bodies. Here is her response. Is this an opportunity to talk about the obesity paradox? And yes, it is cold enough for me. The obesity paradox is the fun way the science and medical community maintain their bias against fat people. See, because instead of going back and being like, hmm, maybe weight isn't as impactful on people's health as we stated, they just call it a paradox. It's too confusing. The paradox states is actually a lot of people who carry extra weight on them fare better during medical emergencies. Like, you're more likely to survive a severe heart attack, cancer, illness, injury. Carrying extra energy stores on your body helps you during recovery. And instead of using this opportunity to stop stigmatizing larger bodies in medical fields, they just said, it's a paradox. We're confused. You can Google it if you don't believe me. This is highly researched. And there's more proof that BMI is trash. This woman is a TikToker who likes to use her degree in science to speak about fat acceptance and tell others they are wrong, even when presented research. This makes it even more irresponsible and infuriating when she is making baseless claims as someone seen with authority. Anyways, let's get into her quote-unquote points. To say the obesity paradox is just called a paradox so that doctors can hate fat people is bananas. It's a paradox not because you think the study shows fat people are healthier, but that in these circumstances, it may have an advantage compared to thinner and older sick people. Because yes, the study on this topic were done with younger people dealing with cardiac issues compared to older people who will naturally have a higher chance of fatality after a cardiovascular event. This research about this paradox by the European Journal of Epidemiology states biases within the interpretation of research and the research itself. In 20 to 26 studies, overweight and or obese patients were younger, 1 to 10 years younger. It was observed that heart issues occurred 12 years earlier than normal BMI patients, and 3 years earlier in overweight patients. The findings of younger age obese patients admitted for ACS, which is acute coronary syndrome, therapy could be possible could be one possible explanation for the better survival rates after ACS in people with a BMI above 25. The lifespan of those people were 10 years shorter than their average counterparts. Not only that, but elderly who were obese had a higher mortality rate than elder elderly with a healthy BMI. Weight has found to be an independent risk factor in hospital mortality. It continues to talk about comorbidities and complication in overweight obese patients. Patients with BMI over 25 had higher cardiovascular risk, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia more than normal BMI patients. The better survival weight of overweight people in the Paradox study may be due to the short follow-ups in the studies, because during in-hospital stays, five years afterwards, diabetes or hypertension had little chance to evoke complications and impact mortality. These patients also had higher risk of bleeding and anemia. Basically, this information is being taken in a very uneducated way, which is concerning for someone who claims to be very educated on health, Think of the obesity paradox like this, the smoking paradox, where in some cases people during COVID outbreaks were less likely to get it due to the tar on their lungs preventing infection. We also know that smoking shortens lifespan and, in general, is very bad for everyday and long-term health. Does this one instance where smoking may protect you suddenly mean it is good for you? No. I've heard of several stories where, during a car accident, someone not wearing their seatbelt actually saved their life, as they were able to get out of the car easier, or even cases where the seatbelt itself caused broken ribs, pelvis, etc. But we know in most cases, not wearing a seatbelt causes injury or death in accidents. That is how my stepbrother passed away. We could call this a seatbelt paradox, 
And it is still what it means that people should start saying that not wearing seatbelts is actually healthier than wearing one. These things are called paradoxes because in every other instance, we have complete evidence of the harm done by things like obesity, smoking, or not wearing your seatbelt. Yet there is an outlier here and there in very few situations. There is no conspiracy going on by medical researchers across the entire world because they don't like fat people. That doesn't even make logical sense. If this was somehow proof that obesity had no adverse effects on health and they were dedicated to making sure everyone hated fat people, would they even bother releasing these studies? No, because they know the conclusion to the study isn't that being obese or overweight is healthier than being at an average weight. There was another study done by Northwestern Medicine in 2018 that found evidence against the idea that being obese or overweight is healthier, or the obesity paradox as it is properly referred to. The study had a paywall so I could not access the full text, but here are the results. Overweight and obesity were associated with significantly increased risk for CVD, cardiovascular disease. Obesity was associated with shorter longevity and a greater proportion of life lived with CVD. Overweight was associated with similar longevity at normal weight, but at the expense of a greater proportion of life lived with CVD. That last part is important, because something people don't mention when talking about the obesity paradox is that those who are overweight are more likely to be living with cardiovascular issues longer than those who are average weight and then had a CVD at an older age. And that is because the higher weight people tend to get those issues much earlier than their counterparts. Therefore, dealing with the illness longer and being young in itself improves recovery probability. This article about the study states exactly this. Dr. Sadia Khan was talked to about the obesity paradox and the recent Northwestern Medicine study, and she states, The obesity paradox caused a lot of confusion and potential damage because we know there are cardiovascular and non-cardiovascular risks associated with obesity. I get a lot of patients who ask, why do I need to lose weight if research says I'm going to live longer? I tell them losing weight doesn't just reduce the risk of developing heart disease, but other diseases like cancer. Our data shows you will live longer and healthier at a normal weight. The Northwestern study found that having a stroke or heart failure or cardio death was 21% higher in overweight middle-aged men than normal weight, and 32% higher in overweight women. For obese men, it was 67% higher than normal weight and 85% higher in obese women. Lifespan for normal weight men is almost two years longer than obese men and six years longer than morbidly obese men. For women, normal weight women lived 1.4 years longer than overweight women, 3.4 years longer than obese women, and six years longer than morbidly obese women. Dr. Khan stated that a healthy weight promotes healthy longevity or longer health span, in addition to lifespan, so that greater years are lived also healthier years lived. It's about having a much better quality of life. So, we can safely say that the whole obesity gives you better chances at life thing is not true at all. I'm sure a lot of us had a pretty general view on this and why this paradox was not what it seemed to be with how it has been presented by science deniers, but now I hope I gave a more conclusive understanding of it, but I'm not stopping here. The obesity paradox I've talked about enough, in my opinion, but that doesn't mean other people aren't pulling up random studies, misunderstanding them, and then using them for proof that there are no health issues associated with extreme excess fat. This next TikToker is pretty popular. So again, it makes this whole thing worse. Oh, what's this? A comprehensive long-term study with excellent methodology about the relationship between weight behaviors and health? Let's talk about it. In this study, researchers looked at 11,761 cisgendered men and women of varying ages, races, and weights. They asked the subjects to engage in some combination of four different health-promoting behaviors, and the health of the subjects was tracked for an average of 170 months, which is about 14 years of data collected per person. The four health-promoting behaviors were five or more servings of fruits and veggies per day, exercising more than 12 times per month, limiting alcohol up to one drink per day for cis women and up to two drinks per day for cis men and not smoking at all.
And just want to point out that these are not healthy habits for everyone. I have chronic pain and exercising 12 times per month would be excruciating. Or also there are people with digestive diseases for whom eating five servings of fruits and veggies per day would cause a lot of damage. So these are very general concepts. Now let's get to those results. On this graph, the vertical axis is health hazards. So the taller the bar, the more health risks there are. And then the horizontal axis is how many of the four behaviors were adopted. And you can see here that the participants were divided into three categories based on their BMI. Now, BMI is trash, but since that's what they use, those are the words we have to use in order to talk about this study. So the lightest colored bar represents people in the quote normal weight category. The middle bar is people in the quote overweight category. And then the darkest bar is for people in the quote obese category. So you can see here in this first section where none of the health promoting behaviors are being utilized that there was a big difference in health hazards between the three weight categories. And to be clear, that doesn't mean that weight is causing that difference. That difference can also be caused by the fact that fat people are denied medical care or receive far worse care when we do get medical care or the fact that fat people experience immense stress from all the stigma and prejudice we face. Regardless, what you can see here is that after only one health promoting behavior is adopted Adopted, the health risks both dropped and compressed between all of the BMI categories dramatically. And by the time we get to all four health promoting behaviors, not only are the health risks extremely low for everyone, but there is virtually no difference in the health risks between all three different weight categories, despite the fact that the weight of the participants did not change. Weight is a terrible predictor of health, and every single time we study other factors like genetics, environment, and behavior, this is what we find. Now, I want to start off by saying the study she's talking about started in the 80s and was reliant on self-reported data, which we know is not the most reliable. But every study has its weaknesses, it doesn't mean it's inherently horrible. So, she says the study is proof that weight isn't a predictor of health, because obese and overweight people were healthier after adopting healthy habits, but were still classified as overweight or obese. The study wasn't set out to prove that obesity has no impact on health. It was done to explore the benefits of healthy habits to encourage more doctors to discuss nutrition and healthy lifestyles with all patients, regardless of weight. It states in the study, the purpose of the study was to determine the association between healthy lifestyle habits, consumption of five or more servings of fruits or vegetables a day, regular exercise 12 times per month, moderate alcohol consumption, and all-cause mortality in the U.S., adults 21 years of age or older. It wasn't geared towards proving that fat has no health impacts. The study itself literally acknowledges the issues that come along with obesity. A large body of epidemiologic evidence suggests that obesity is an independent risk factor for early mortality. Though the evidence for the risk of being overweight is mixed, most studies find no increased risk of mortality among overweight people. I'm going to interject here that the more recent study I mentioned previously disproved this. Again, the study I'm currently discussing is older. The increased risk of mortality associated with obesity is of a considerable concern because more than 33% of American adults are categorized as obese. It's now over 41%. By even the most conservative estimates, obesity is responsible for more than 80,000 deaths annually. It is now about 280,184 deaths annually. Obesity increases the risk of illnesses such as coronary artery disease, diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, and several types of cancer. In addition to increasing morbidity and mortality, obesity is a major financial strain on both individuals and society, with the direct annual medical costs estimated to be in an excess of $147 billion. It is now around $173 billion. Let's look at the graph she pulled up. So I have it lined here to make it easier to understand with a glance because I don't like the grain scheme they used. We want to look at the purple obesity line, which is much higher at the beginning of the study for health risks. The woman in the TikTok goes to say that this is likely because of a lack of medical care and weight stigma, and not due to their obesity, which is her own assumption that the study did not state. After the previously stated healthy habits are implemented, the risk factors for hazards in obese people go down, despite people still being obese. Something that the study does not mention is if these obese people who were very heavy to begin with and then lost weight but remained obese. 
It also does not show how many of these obese people in the beginning of the study ended up being on the overweight or normal weight bar post healthy habits. There were also over 2,000 deaths during this study, and we do not know which group of BMI they were majority in, or what overall cause of death was, and if there were any trends within the deaths that occurred during the study. It also does not record in detail health among the people they looked at, as in we can't assume all these people are perfectly healthy and in the same range of health as we are only looking at certain risk factors, not all of them. As in we don't know who has a risk of genetic illnesses, who has joint issues, and again, this is a study relying on self-reporting. Something I found interesting was that the healthy habits that include eating more did not benefit obese people. Consumption of five or more servings of fruit and vegetables was associated with a decreased mortality in normal weight in overweight individuals, but not in obese individuals. It does not state why this is, but I'm making a purely personal assumption that it is because despite the food being healthy, the excess with other food along with this increase was not helpful in reversing any impacts of obesity. Again, this is a personal opinion, and the study does not go into detail about this part. Now, let's take the woman's assumption that the obese people were at a worse place health-wise due to weight stigma or improper medical care. How would these other healthy habits reduce hazard risk if none of the habits had anything to do with going to the doctor or reducing weight stigma? Wouldn't the health risk remain the same for obese people if it were stigma-causing health issues and not habits? So that itself doesn't track. The study even emphasizes that these new habits were most beneficial to those in overweight and obese BMI ranges. Survival improved each time a new healthy habit was added in the overweight and obese groups. When stratified into normal weight, overweight, and obese groups, all groups benefited from the adoption of healthy habits with the greatest benefit seen within the obese group. If healthy habits created lower health risks, then that means the high hazard risk in the beginning were due to unhealthy habits since it was able to change in which p obese people were most impacted by, implying their bad habits can impact weight, were far worse than those of average weight or even overweight people. This again discredits the whole obesity isn't caused by unhealthy habits thing. Why did the risk go down while people remained obese? Well, if we ignore the lack of details, we can conclude that being obese while keeping good habits is better than being obese with bad habits. It's like a smoker who starts eating better will be better off than a smoker who eats junk all day. For this study to tell us who lives longer with healthy habits despite BMI, it would need to follow each person till their death or a critical diagnosis, which it doesn't. Adopting a healthy habit does improve your chances, but that does not disprove the harm of body fat itself. This study does not tell us who has joint issues, who lost or gained weight, who is dealing with non-terminal disease, we don't even know the ages of the subjects, just that they are 21 and older. This graph and study does not prove that weight itself is completely irrelevant in long-term health outcomes. It just shows that healthy habits reduce risk of illness for all people. I want to re-emphasize that this is a study over 30 years old, and the results heavily relied on self-reporting healthy habits. So I, in general, do not put a huge amount of faith in it, as a science or an obesity research has evolved so much along within the rapid increase of obesity rates. I think the most important part of the study was when they emphasized the importance of doctors discussing health habits with all patients, as in nutrition and exercise, instead of only trying to talk to obese people about it. You can be any weight and have a an healthy lifestyle, so it is definitely important for all doctors to keep that in mind, no matter the weight of their patient. Now, why is it a problem to be spreading around this idea that you can be obese and perfectly healthy? Well, here is a TikTok that will answer that question. So I just got back from the doctor. Um, just got out of the doctor and she goes, hey, you're really fat. And I said, yeah, I know. Um, I'm just here to get my medication renewed. Uh, it's Lexapro. Like, it's not even weight related. Like, can I just get my medicine? And that's all. <clears throat> and she said, yeah, but you're really fat. And I said, word. <clears throat> She's like, what are you doing? Do you diet? And I'm like, well, I, you know, do what I can. Well, what's what you can? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm a slacker. I'm not really good at doing things that are as good for me. And she goes, yeah, well, you need to do something because you're going to die. And I said, I'm just fat. I'm not unhealthy. Like, all my, my levels are fine. And she goes, no, you're going to die. And I said, oh, I guess it's everybody's turn. Um, you know, everybody dies. 
She goes, we're going to put you on an injection once a week so that you can stop eating, you fat fuck. I said, okay, well, I guess there's no other option. And she said, yeah, put this thing in your big fat belly. You just gotta stab yourself in your big fat juicy gut. And once a week, and you're not going to eat anymore. And if you do eat, you'll vomit. She said, good luck. And I said, okay, thank you. So that's the story of uh, my day one of uh, Ozempic. So wish me luck. So I think we can all agree that she is very much over-exaggerating how her doctor talked to her. I'm not going to say that there is no medical mistreatment at all towards obese people, but this does not seem like one of those times. I highly doubt the conversation went the way it is being repeated. And I find it interesting that people get mad when they go to the doctor and are told that they have an issue that is unhealthy and therefore needs to be fixed. The doctor didn't even just say lose weight and get lost either. She prescribed a medication that has been very successful in helping people lose weight in a healthy way that does not include fad diets or extreme restriction. It will not make her puke anytime she eats or prevent her from eating altogether. It helps with keeping people from excessive eating, which is what causes obesity. This is great for people who have binging issues and need to learn what a normal diet is supposed to look like. I'm glad she's taking the medication, it seems. I haven't seen any updates on this, but her reaction is a result of those random people telling others that you can be healthy and obese. I have talked about this before, but blood levels do not equal health. You can have a fine blood panel and still have a lot of health issues. This misinformation is what gives people the confidence to tell a doctor they are wrong when they state that obesity is a health concern. I understand she's upset that this appointment for something else turned into one about her weight, but doctors aren't exactly supposed to ignore health issues when they know they can help. If I go into my doctor's office to get a prescription refilled and they notice I've gained a lot of weight or have high blood pressure or lost a lot of weight or anything concerning like that, it is their responsibility to tell me that and then help me understand how to deal with it and or provide care and resources to help solve the issue. Another example, I learned my dog had a possible thyroid issue when she went in for a normal grooming appointment as she is endlessly fluffy. So now she has an appointment this week to get her blood checked. And this is me coming in later the day of her appointment and her thyroid is fine. So that's great. Well, I am all for criticizing when doctors are out of line. I have personally experienced it myself, and it can be seriously traumatizing. But this is not at all one of those instances. The doctor noticed an issue, asked about it, then provided a solution. That is a perfect example of what is supposed to happen at an appointment. This trend of using scientific studies in a very messed up way to say that obesity has no health implications is seriously damaging especially since weight can be such a sensitive topic that someone who is insecure is going to hold on to this false information as much as possible, even in the face of doctors or proper evidence. This TikTok wasn't even the worst I've seen of the people crapping on their doctors for being concerned about their health. At least she accepted the prescription, but this was like the best case scenario um, compared to the other TikToks that I've seen of people talking about their doctors being endlessly fatphobic for pointing out that their weight is an issue. Well, I'm ending the video on that note. This was very research heavy and a lot of me talking, but I hope it was still entertaining and interesting and that you learned something. The next few weeks are going to be more casual reaction videos, most likely until I fixate on a specific topic again. Thanks if you listened to all of this, and I hope everyone has a great week. If you are on break from school right now, I hope you're enjoying it. I definitely am. I'm gonna go sleep for three days now. Bye, y'all.